you. Just a minute, Kelly. It's okay now. Hello, my name is Kelly Giyu, and I'm the organizer for Running for Research Prater Willie Syndrome. I'm here today to talk about the gut microbiome study that we will be funding uh, with the 2021 Running for Research event. With me today are Dr. Jennifer Miller, Dr. Wendy Dahl, and Dr. Thomas Tompkins, who together will be the primary researchers involved in the study. I'd like to begin by introducing each doctor and then conducting a brief question and answer session that will explain the purpose of the study and what the potential benefit could be to the PWS community. First, I'd like to introduce someone many of you already know, but for those of you that don't, Dr. Jennifer Miller. Dr. Miller is a professor of pediatric endocrinology at the University of Florida. Dr. Miller specializes in the care and treatment of individuals with Prader-Willi syndrome and currently follows over 500 patients worldwide that are living with PWS. Also here today is Dr. Wendy Dahl. Dr. Dahl is an associate professor of nutritional sciences and a nutrition extension specialist with the food science and human nutrition department at the University of Florida. She holds a PhD in nutrition from the University of Saskatchewan. Dr. Dahl leads research examining the effects of fiber, prebiotics, and probiotics on gastrointestinal health and disease. We also have Dr. Thomas Tompkins. Dr. Tompkins uh, is a, the research director of the Roselle Institute for Microbiome and Probiotics, the research section of Lalamond Health Solutions located in Montreal, Canada. Dr. Tompkins did his graduate studies at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto, Canada, where he studied cellular signaling pathways and multiple sclerosis. He has been working with Lalamond since 1995 and has been investigating the relationship between gut microbiomes, stress, neurological activity, and behavior. Dr. Tompkins' aim is to improve symptoms of mood, anxiety, and depression using micro microbial uh, intervention. So now let's begin our discussion by talking a little bit about what each of your roles will be in this gut microbiome study. Who would like to start? I'll start. Um, so my role will be as the principal investigator, um, as the person who clinically sees individuals with Prader-Willi syndrome. So I will help um, with recruitment and um, assist Dr. Dahl and Dr. Tompkins in anything that they might need in terms of getting ethical approval for this study, making sure that we have the patient numbers that we need for this study, um, that, that the procedures are carried out correctly, that kind of stuff. Great. And next. I'll go next. Um, so my role will be um, in terms of study coordination. And so I will assist and also um, um, supervised study coordinator that'll um, help with recruitment, um, help with sample collections, um, help with dietary assessment and all of the other outcomes that we're examining in the study. Great. Thank you, Dr. Dahl. And, Dr. From, and from Dr. Dahl and Dr. Miller, we'll get all the poop samples we need. <laughs> <laughs> and we will we will do this uh, assessment in our facility here in Montreal, so that we will receive the samples. We'll do the extraction of the DNA, and then we will do the analysis of the samples and provide that data back to them for uh, interpretation and evaluation. Okay, so let me ask the first big question: What is the objective? of the study of the gut microbiome of individuals with PWS. Dr. Tompkins, would you like to take that one? Well, this is, um, this, is, this is new for us. I mean, the whole aspect of microbiome analysis has is a, a very new area of, of, of research. And 
an interpretation of the microbiome in association with specific syndromes is, is very novel. And so we're at a learning stage here and trying to assess um, where are people on the different spectrum of their microbiome uh, composition uh, based on uh, various factors in their life, including lifestyle, including uh, various syndromes, and, and, and in the environment in which they live, and, and, and genetic disorders as well. And so we're trying to bring all that together. So at this point, it's, we are, we've done an initial study with, uh, with, with uh, Dr. Miller and Dr. Dow uh, in adult uh, participants. And we did see that there was a significant shift in the microbiome composition of these uh, people with Prader-Willi syndrome. Now, this is very interesting to us. We need to understand more deeply uh, at what point of their life does this composition change occur? Is it something that is from birth and we can see throughout their life? Or is this something that develops when we change their diet? So we put people on a uh, caloric-restricted diet. Does this, is this what is causing the changes in the microbiome composition? And we have to learn this in order to help to understand what will be, um, how we may be able to uh, help individuals uh, change their lifestyle or change their diet so that we can ensure that uh, they have a composition that will see them through uh, in, in, a, in a quality of life that is that you know they would, would hope to be able to achieve with this. So I think that's where we're trying to understand and what would be the impact of, of having a, a composition that is maybe um, more towards, uh, let's say, uh, metabolism and those that have uh, one that may be more geared towards um, protein metabolism. We need to understand the, the outcomes of, of, of this. And this is one way of being able to do this type of evaluation. Okay. And so, from I'm sorry, Kelly, uh, one second. I would add to that, that I think one of the, the other important aspects that we'll be looking at here is, is how the gut microbiome um, is possibly affiliated with the different nutritional phases that individuals with Prader-Willi syndrome go through, as well as some of the sort of core symptoms of Prader-Willi that we know um, affect many children with, and adults with Prader-Willi, like anxiety um, and, and things like that. And so um, one of the things that Dr. Dahl and Dr. Tompkins have really sort of emphasized and taught me is how much the gut does affect the brain and how much, you know, this gut microbiome can ultimately end up affecting clinical outcome in individuals with Prader-Willi. Because we have noticed when I, and, and I say we, in a previous study, it's been noticed that there are differences in the, the gut microbiome of individuals with PWS versus typical persons. Correct. And so we just don't know if it's it's related to a restricted diet, if it's part of the symptoms of, or uh, I'm sorry, part of the manifestations of PWS. So, so you're trying to discover, you know, there are differences. Why are there differences? What difference does the difference make in Correct. the symptoms that we see? Correct. That's very much true. Very and interesting. Can, yeah, and and exactly, and then if we can identify some changes. Is there something that we can think about in the future, how we may be able to modify that? Is there a window of opportunity to modify that so that we could potentially offset any of the detriment that this microbiome composition may be leading towards? Okay. And especially looking at infants, you know, early in life, you know, who are newly diagnosed to see, you know, is there any impact on you know, breastfeeding versus formula feeding or um, things like that or, or introduction of solids or things like that. So um, so there's a lot to be learned from this population that that nobody has yet looked at. OK. And so as far as previous investigations are concerned in this particular topic, as it relates to PWS, there has been, to my knowledge, the one study that we just mentioned uh, in regard to adults but this is uncharted territory for other individuals with PWS in the larger population. 
No, there was another study done by Andre Andrea Hawks group um, at, at Edmonton, I believe. Um, and but the the problem was that they didn't look specifically at nutritional phases associated with the gut microbiome analysis, at diet associated with the gut microbiome analysis. I mean, there was just a lot of, of unknowns, um, I feel like, from that study. And I feel like because we know our patient population very well, that we'll be able, this will be more thorough as we investigate the gut microbiome, that we'll have the sort of corresponding information to go with it. And, and, it's, and it's nice to see that, you know, basically what the the group of Andrea Hack had, had seen was very similar to what we observed in the adults. So I think it's, this two studies are complementary, but I think this will definitely take it. Uh, uh, the idea is to take this into a much deeper evaluation than, than has ever been done in any population group previously. So I think this is, this is quite unique. We see it in some other situations, but more typically in gastrointestinal situations like inflammatory bowel diseases and things like this. But here, this is quite unique in, in, in our situation. So I think we have a, a good opportunity to learn a lot at this, this stage. Okay, and when do, we, when do we expect that we could begin the study? Does anybody have a, 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 an idea about that? Would it be in the 2021 calendar year? I would think that's our hope for sure. I, I would expect that um, it usually takes perhaps two or three months um, for ethics approval. And, and so we have that step to complete. And, and then I would hope that perhaps later in the spring, if the ethics approval goes through, that we would be able to um, start recruitment. That's, that's great. That's great news. I know that this is a topic that has captured the interest of our community. Um, and, I, and obviously from listening to you all speak about it, it's something that could have, at a minimum, a great potential for learning about these differences that these individuals with PWS do have in their gut microbiome. And am I am I correct in saying that we have also seen some of these same differences in other individuals that are obese or have other obesity related disorders? I think we see um, some aspects which have some similarities to um, to obesity. But not always. I think what we're seeing here is a is a fairly unique signature uh, that we haven't really recorded in other groups, in other populations that we've looked at. Um, sometimes you do see some overlap in terms of lacking certain microbes, like um, microbes we call acromensia, the calibacterium, are often deficit in uh, people with Prader-Willi syndrome. And that we know that these microbes are associated typically with leanness, but not all Prader-Willi syndrome people um, may may have this deficit. I mean, uh, and again, similarly, you know, not all obese people have a deficit in these microbes as well. But the trick is trying to understand um, the composition as a whole and what might be changing uh, with time. And I think the important thing is about this is we're we're not just going to collect one time point. I think we have to understand that we would need to look at longitudinally, so over over a period of, of many months, many years, as we see the development uh, of the the progression of the uh, Prader-Willi syndrome. I think we'll also be able to learn more about what is the progression of the microbiome composition at the same time. And I think this is how we like to position this, and how we like to understand um, how things are are going. And 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 I try to slot them into what people already know or think they know about obesity, because I think really, um, you know, just as every individual has its own microbiome composition, I think in, in a sense, there'll be that background to the, uh, to the Prader-Willi syndrome as well. But so we have to sort of sort through the noise to get down to uh, what's at the heart of this. And I think that's what we're, we're, we're looking to trying to do. And again, longitudinally over, over a series of, of times, a series of samples. Right. Well, and I think that people who are in studies also will potentially benefit from this because we might be able to additionally, as people go through different, you know, clinical trials, um, look over time as well at their gut microbiome and see is there any changes that occur with any trial meds that may be affecting whether it's sleep or hyperphagia or anxiety um, to see if there's a corresponding change in the gut microbiome that goes along with that. 
This is all very exciting stuff. And we are grateful to the three of you for your interest and your ability to um, propose this study and to conduct this study and to learn, to learn what we need to learn. There's so much yet we have to discover. And this is a wonderful step in that direction. So for that, I say thank you to all of you wonderful doctors and researchers. <laughs> Does anyone else have anything they would like to add? I take that as a no then. So in that case, thank you for your time. And we are excited to see what discoveries may come out of this study and what implications uh, there may be for people within the PWS community. I think this will be a really exciting study to do. Um, and, and as you know, I'm very enthusiastic about it. It's an area that I felt like needs to be looked at for quite a long time. So I'm super excited to have found collaborators who are so brilliant and, and interested and excited about working with Prader-Willi syndrome and, and poop, which I am not interested in. <laughs> but, um, but I do think it's, it potentially could have a very um, profound impact on individuals with Prader-Willi syndrome. Well, we are, we're very excited and we're very thankful to uh, everyone that's participating in Running for Research that have we have been so successful so far in our fundraising efforts. And we will continue to uh, raise money to the best of our abilities up until the day of the race. So thank you thank again you, very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.